Hey everyone, this is Matthew Doyle for Autodesk Gameware. Today I'll be walking you through the installation and setup of the Autodesk Scale Form for Mobile Platforms SDK, as well as some basic usage of the SDK. The SDK will allow you to either take existing Flash games and apps or create new ones that you can then easily publish to Android and iOS devices. But before you can do that, you'll need to get acquainted with the SDK first. You'll need to sign up as a developer at gameware.autodesk.com. Once you do that, download the mobile SDK for iOS Mac development. There are a few prerequisites you'll need on your Mac for iOS development. First of all, you'll need to be running Snow Leopard 10.6 or higher. You'll need Xcode 4 installed along with the Xcode command line tools. You'll also need the iOS SDK version 5 or higher. And of course, you'll need to install the iOS Scaleform Mobile SDK. Just follow all the prompts in the installation window. Once complete, the installer will launch two windows, the SDK browser and a README. The README covers everything we'll be talking about in this walkthrough. The SDK browser is a convenient way to find and launch the various Scaleform tools, tutorials, and samples. Now that the SDK is installed, let's have a look at the install folder. You'll find it in your home directory under Scaleform 4.1 iOS Mobile. The third-party folder contains third-party libraries that Scaleform makes use of. The app folder contains source code for sample projects including FX Player Mobile and the Shipping Player. Inside the bin folder you'll find several important items. In the data folder you'll find several sample flash projects for both ActionScript 2 and ActionScript 3. For example, in the ActionScript 3 folder you'll find all of the Flash content used by the new Scaleform mobile kit, Starforce Battlement. Also in this folder are several important binary files. First up is AMP Client. This will launch Scaleform's content profiling tool, which allows developers to profile their Flash content both locally or remotely. AMP can be used to profile your application while it's running on the device. To connect AMP to your device, both the device and the system running AMP must be on the same wireless network. Direct connection via USB is not supported at this time. Once your device has an IP address, put that address into AMP's connection dialog box and press connect. For more detailed information on AMP, please see our AMP user's guide. Finally, FX Media Player is a standalone Scaleform Flash player, which allows you to test your content by simply dragging and dropping it onto the player. The doc folder contains a great deal of documentation of the various features and functionality of Scaleform. Be sure to spend some time in here. The lib folder contains pre-built Scaleform libraries that Scaleform applications link against. Inside local apps you'll find several pre-built sample project def files which are used to build Xcode projects which you can then use to build an application that is ready to be published to an iOS device. We'll talk more about this folder shortly. The Projects folder contains the Xcode projects. In the Resources folder, you'll find both ActionScript 2 and ActionScript 3 implementations of Scaleform's Component Lightweight Interface Kit, or CLIC for short. This is a UI widget framework for rapidly prototyping menus and comes with pre-built buttons, sliders, checkboxes, scrolling lists, and all the various menu elements you're likely to use. The source directory contains Scaleform source code required to build Scaleform apps. Finally, be sure to read the Getting Started with GFX PDF if you're a newcomer to Scaleform development. Alright, let's try to put our first Scaleform app onto an iOS device. For this simple test, we'll first use FX Player Tiny, the smallest and most simple version of the Scaleform player which can be used to play flash files located on the iOS device. This player is written entirely in Objective-C and is a good place to start learning Scaleform development for iOS. You'll find the Xcode project for FX Player Tiny in Projects, iPhone, 
Xcode 4, GFX 4.1 FX Player Tiny. In Xcode, to run the player on your device, first select your iOS device. Next, select Edit Scheme and change the build configuration to release no RTTI. Press Run. Once the build completes, the player should be sent to your device and launched. The player plays a single simple flash file by default. If you would like to replace this flash file with something else, simply replace the flash file flash.swift in the tiny player directory with your own flash file and rebuild. Be sure to keep the file name flash.swift as this is the name of the file the tiny player expects. Next we'll build and launch FX Player Mobile. This is the standard mobile version of Scaleform's GFX Player that can be used to play flash files on your device. You'll find the Xcode project for this player in Projects, iPhone, Xcode 4, GFX 4.1 iPhone SDK. As before, select your iOS device, select Edit Scheme, and change the build configuration to release no RTTI. Press Run. Unlike Tiny Player, FX Player Mobile can run multiple flash files. However, like Tiny Player, the first flash file the mobile player expects must be named flash.swift. To add more flash files to the mobile player, launch iTunes. Select your device. Select the Apps tab. Choose FX Player Mobile and click the Add button. In the Bin Data AS3 Samples directory, select 3D Generator underscore AS3.swift and Fish Vector .swift. If the player is running on your device, restart it. The mobile player comes with a performance stat HUD, which can easily be accessed by pressing the down arrow. The HUD includes stats for FPS, draw primitives, triangles, masks, memory used, etc., as well as millisecond timings for advance and display. It can also be used to switch between flash files, restart a flash movie, or toggle various debug modes such as batching mode or overdraw mode. Play around with the HUD to see what it can do, and try switching between the flash files we loaded using the next and previous buttons. Next up I'll show you how to use the Shipping Mobile Player, which provides a convenient and fast method for packaging your games and apps for the App Store. You can quickly see a sample of the Shipping Mobile Player in action by pushing the Starforce Battlement app to your iOS device. Starforce Battlement is a fully realized tower defense game, which uses Scaleform as a hardware accelerated 2.5D game engine. It illustrates a best practice sample implementation of a mobile, touch-based game. We're going to use the Starforce def file found in the local apps directory to build an Xcode project, which we can then use to build and install the app. Before you can build an Xcode project for Starforce, please make sure that you have the Xcode command line tool installed. Now open the Mac terminal. In the terminal, first ensure you are in the Scaleform SDK installation folder. Then type make p equals iPhone slash arm v7 c equals release plus no RTTI. Once the build completes, you will have a new standalone Xcode project for Starforce in the local apps Starforce TD iPhone directory. As before, to install and run the game on your iOS device, simply open the Xcode project. Now select your iOS device, choose Edit Scheme, and change the build configuration to release no RTTI. Press Run. The game should be sent to your device and automatically run. Creating your own shippable app definition file is easy. First, make a copy of the Starforce TD def file. Next, rename it to the title of your app. Now let's edit that def file in a text editor. Change display name to whatever you want your app's name to be displayed on the device. We'll call it My App. 
The starting flash file must always be named flash.swift. The def file allows you to specify a flash file which you would like to be automatically renamed to flash.swift. Simply enter the path to this file in startup flash. For now, we'll go ahead and keep starforce td.swift. The resources line allows you to enter the path to files and whole directories that contain necessary resources used by your application. Enter a single file or directory on each line. Enter the orientation your app should be locked to in the orientations line. If no orientation is set, your app will be allowed to use all the orientations. In this case, we'll keep landscape set. You can enable or disable edge anti-aliasing and fmod support in the next two lines. Obviously, to ship fmod libraries with your app, you'll need an fmod license. Finally, the last two lines allow you to toggle whether the app automatically installs to your connected device after being built and automatically runs once it's installed. For now, we'll save the file. As before, open the Mac terminal and ensure you're in the proper directory. Next, type make p equals iPhone slash armv7 c equals release plus no rtti. You will now have a new standalone Xcode project for your app in the local apps my app directory. That's all there is to it. I hope you found this walkthrough useful. For publishing to Android devices, be sure to watch the Android specific Getting Started video. For discussions related to Scaleform mobile development, be sure to visit our forums at area.autodesk.com slash forum slash game dash developer dash zone slash scaleform mobile dash development. Thanks for watching.